Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is another video in the STM32 register based programming series, and today we will see how to receive data from an I2C device. To keep the things more practical, I am going to use the MPU6050 accelerometer. So I would need to write and read data from the device, and hence both the I2C write and read conditions will be used. I have already made a video on how to send data using I2C, and I would suggest you to go through that video first. This is important because I will not cover the I2C configuration today, and instead, I am going to use all the functions that are already covered in that video. Let's start by creating the project in Kyle ID first. Create your project folder, give the name to the project and click save. I am using STM32 F446RE controller. I will fast forward through the initial setup, I guess you guys are already familiar with this part. Let's include our basic library files first, the clock configuration, and the delay header files. Everything I am including here has already been covered in the previous videos. Check out the STM32 register based playlist for the videos. Now that all the files have been added, let's include them and write the main function. Like I said in the beginning, I am going to use the I2C functions from the previous video. These functions include I2C configuration, I2C start, I2C write, send the address, to stop, and to write the multiple bytes. I am going to copy all these functions, and this time I will create a new library for I2C itself. To do that, I am creating a source file, I2C.C, and paste those functions here. Here we also need to create a header file, where those functions can be defined, so that we can use them freely in other files also. I am going to name the header file as i2c.h. Here we only need to define the functions, so only copy the functions definition. It's not able to recognize the integer type, so include the stdint.h. Our header file is ready now. We also need to include the device header file in the i2c.c, but I will just include a ccconfig.h, as it already have all other necessary inclusions. Now include the I2C library that we just created in our main file. In addition to all the functions that we already have, we need to create a new one, to read the data from the I2C slave. I am calling it I2C read and it will take three parameters, and they are the address of the slave, the buffer to store the data into, and the size of the data that you want to receive.
Before proceeding any further, let's take a look at the datasheet. Here we have the transfer sequence for master receive. Here you can see, in the receiver mode, after each byte is received, the acknowledgement bit is set, and the RXNE bit also gets set. This RXNE, receive buffer not empty bit, basically indicates that there is some data in the data register, and it gets cleared after we read that data. Receiving data using I2C in STM32 is same as in any other microcontroller, but the things gets a little complicated, when we want to end the reception. I will try to keep it as simple as possible. Let's start with this third point first. If we want to receive a single byte, then we must send the non-acknowledgement before the address flag is cleared, and a stop must be sent after the EV6 event. This might be a bit complex to understand like this, so let's see the sequence diagram. When we want to receive data, we send the start condition, and then the address of the device, and then comes the EV6 event. Which basically means that the address flag is set, and to clear the flag, we must make a read to status register 1 followed by status register 2. As according to this line, we must send a non-acknowledgement before clearing the address flag, and a stop, after clearing the address flag. Let's try to write the program using this. I have summarized the steps here. For receiving one byte of data, first send the slave address and wait for the address flag to set. Then we will send the non-acknowledgement bit, clear the address flag, and send the stop condition. And then wait for the RXNE bit to indicate that there is some data in the data register. And finally read that data. I am creating a variable to keep track of the remaining bytes. Here is the code for single byte reception. First send the address, and wait for the address flag to set. Then clear the acknowledgement bit, which is bit 10 in control register 1. Then clear the address flag by performing a read in status registers 1 and 2. And then send the stop condition. Now wait for the RXNE bit to set, which is bit 6 in status register 1. And finally save the data into the buffer. This is how we receive a single byte from any I2C device. Now let's see how to receive multiple bytes of data. As you can see here, in order to receive multiple bytes, we need to send a non-acknowledgement after the second last byte of the data has been received. Which should be followed by a stop bit. So here is the big code for that. Let's go through it. Here I have already mentioned what steps are being followed below. Let's take a closer look at them. As usual, first we are going to send the address, and then wait for the address flag to set. Clear the address flag by reading the status register 1, and status register 2. Now if the remaining bytes are greater than 2, we will just perform the usual operations. That is, 
wait for the RX any bit to set, save the data in the buffer, and set the acknowledgement bit to acknowledge the data received. Now we will receive the second last byte data as usual, but instead of setting the acknowledgement bit, we will clear it. This is according to the information provided in the reference manual. And just after that, set the stop bit to stop the I2C. And finally receive the last data byte. This is basically all for receiving the data from any I2C device. I am going to do one little addition to the I2C start function. I am enabling the acknowledgement bit, and to do so we need to write a 1, in the 10th position of the control register 1. As you can see here, before reading the data from the data register, we always check the RXNE bit. This is bit 6 in the status register 1, and as mentioned here if this bit is set, it means the data register is not empty. So we basically wait for this bit to become 1, and then read the data. These are all the I2C functions we need. Add this I2C receive in the header file, so that we can use it in our main file. Like I said in the beginning, I am using MPU 6050 accelerometer, and in order to initialize the device, we need to write some data to the device. So let's create a function to write the data into MPU 6050. This function will take three parameters, and they are the address of the device, the register that you want to write the data into, and the data itself. Writing the data into I2C device is pretty simple. Start the I2C. Send the address of the device. Send the register, where you want to write the data. Send the data that you want to write. And finally stop the I2C. Now let's create another function to read the data from the device. This function will take four parameters, and they are the address of the device, the register where we want to read the data from, the buffer where you want to save the data, and the size of the data to be received. In order to read the data from any I2C device, we have to follow the same procedure. Start the I2C. Send the address of the device. Send the address of the register where we want to read the data from. Start the I2C again, this will trigger the repeated start condition. And call the I2C read function. Note here that we need to send the read address, which is just the regular address with the LSB as 1. I have already covered how to interface MPU 6050 accelerometer, and I am going to use the functions from that video itself. Here are all the defines needed for this project. This is the function to initialize the accelerometer, and here instead of using the HAL I2C read, I am using the MPU read, to read the who am I register. And then HAL I2C write, are replaced with MPU write functions. This is the function to read the accelerometer data from the device. Here also I am using MPU read, to read the 6 bytes of data from the XOUT register. This data will be stored in the RX data buffer. I have already covered these functions before, I will leave the link to the video in the description.
Here we read the accelerations in different axis. And then we convert them to G values. Let's write the main function now. Configure the system clocks first. I am initializing the timer, so that I can use the delay. And now call the I2C configuration. Next we need to initialize the device. Now in the while loop, we will read the acceleration values. And this process will keep going on every one second. Let's build the code now. Seems like we have three warnings. Remove this volatile keyword. One more warning left. Add a new line here. So all the warnings are gone now. Go to option, my controller is running at 180 MHz. Go to debug, and select ST-Link debugger. Let's debug it now. Add the accelerations to the watch. Let's run it now. You can see the accelerations on the right. As I change the orientation, the values are changing in the respective axis. This is a good proof that everything is working alright. This is it for this video. In the next video, I will start with the basic interrupts. You can download the code from the link in the description. You can support us by donating, or by joining the membership. The links are in the description of this video. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.